on June 5, 1947, in a speech at the Harvard University commencement, Secretary of State George C. Marshall called for an American plan to help Europe recover from World War II and avoid the economic devastation that after World War I created the tensions leading to the Second World War. Subsequently dubbed the Marshall Plan and signed into law by U.S. President Harry Truman, the program covered much of Europe and provided an important foundation in the renewal of Western Europe's post-war societies. It also aimed to strengthen democracy in Europe. The program generated a resurgence of European industrialization, brought extensive investment into the region, and stimulated the U.S. economy by establishing markets for American goods. The Marshall Plan has been recognized as a great humanitarian endeavor, and in 1953, Secretary of State Marshall became the only general ever to receive a Nobel Peace Prize. The Marshall Plan also institutionalized and legitimized the concept of U.S. foreign aid programs, which have become an integral part of U.S. foreign policy. For more about the plan and what it meant for Sweden, today I will be speaking to Dr. Mike Winnestig, head of the Department of Security Policy at the Swedish Defense Research Agency. Dr. Winnerstig, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Can you tell me more about how the Marshall Plan affected Sweden and in which ways Sweden and Swedes benefited from it? The position of Sweden at this time in 1947-48 was actually very dissimilar, very different from the other Western European countries, as we had not been affected by the war directly and also pursued at that time a pretty strict, or at least formally strict, policy of neutrality. And um, as you alluded to, this was an aid package, so to speak, a major aid package for Western Europe and, and the allies-to-be, so to speak, in NATO a few years later. Uh, and other countries, for example, Finland, uh, didn't want to join the Marshall Plan, didn't want to receive any aid at all, because they were kind of scared about or concerned of the reactions in Moscow, as Moscow had said very early on that this is not a form of aid that any uh, Eastern European country under Soviet rule should accept. Sweden did it anyway, not by much. It was about $107 million at the time, which in today's um, currency would be somewhere between one and one and a half billion US dollars in today's currency, which is a lot of money to be sure. But, uh, and, and most of it was given actually, actually as a gift, not as a loan. 20% was a loan that had to be paid back. The others, the other sums were given in various um, ways during a period of about three years as uh, essentially a gift. We used that to buy oil from other countries. We couldn't produce any oil here, as you know, so we had to buy oil to get the uh, the industries working. Although our industries, in in different in, in contrast to most of Western Europe, were unaffected by the war, we still had a shortage of a lot of things, including oil, to make them up and running, get them up and running again. So that was one of the major things economically, so to speak. The other thing, of course, that was even more important in the long term was that this entire enterprise of the Marshall Plan made us become a part of the Western world, if you wish. The Western world more or less started at this area. The West as a concept was not that much used before the Second World War, but in the late 1940s, the Western world stood out as a thing of its own in a way. And the Marshall Plan was a major contributor to that. And Sweden became, despite the policy of street neutrality, we became a part of that world anyway, especially in the economic sense. So it's hard to overstate, actually, uh, the uh, importance of the Marshall Plan uh, for Sweden as well. I mean, it was extremely important for Europe, especially for countries that, was, that were devastated by the war. But for Sweden as well, both the economic and the political, political heritage of the Marshall Plan is, are things that we still um, enjoy in many ways. So thanks so much, um, Mike, for that answer. Did the plan target specific Swedish regions or industries? 
Uh, no, as far as I know, it was set up in the way that the Swedish state, the, the national government essentially, got the money and could use it for the, its own purposes. My understanding is that it was not targeting any specific sectors. And that was, of course, due to the fact that we had no real sectors that needed an emergency build-up. I mean, we had not been bombed. There were no industries that had been destroyed and so on. So the state could use that money as much as it wanted, in a way. And how long did Sweden benefit from the Marshall Plan? Well, in economic terms, uh, the money was distributed over a period of about uh, three or four years. So it, uh, the last uh, trench, so to speak, of money came in, I believe, 1951. Sweden's most illustrious diplomat, Dag Hammarskjöld, was a leader of Marshall Plan implementation in Europe. Can you tell us a little about his role? Well, he was, uh, as, I, as far as I remember, he was in charge of some of the major committees that were um, administratively and politically uh, dealing with the Marshall Funds, and, and that was his job for several years. And um, uh, the Marshall Fund money itself also funded what is still a major heritage of that era, namely the uh, Organization for European Economic Development, the, what's now called the OECD. Uh, which Sweden has been a member of ever since. So uh, the Swedish involvement in this, despite the fact that we kind of um, uh, diminished our role economically in 1951 and ended the, the formal participation, uh, is, this, is still very strong and, and uh, tangible even to this day. The OECD is one of the major international organizations that we are a member of. Yep. Fascinating that that's a, that was the source of... Um the OECD. What's the relationship between the Marshall Plan's implementation and the founding of the European Economic Community and today's European Union? And why do you think the Marshall Plan succeeded in bringing the European market together? Well, obviously, the infusion of a lot of money from the US to Europe made the markets work again after the war, and the industries were being built up also with the same funds. Um, not all of it, of course, came from the Marshall Plan, but it was a, a crucial and integral part of the uh, rebuilding of Europe and Europe's industries after the war. Uh, and this, of course, affected the uh, thinking in Europe about how to deal with the economic relations and wars and so on in general. And although I'm not sure whether you can draw uh, uh, an exact line between the Marshall Fund uh, funds and the Marshall Plan to the European Economic Community and what's now the EU, uh, obviously the thinking that economic cooperation and economic... Um, common frameworks are very good for, for a peaceful future, if you wish. Did the Marshall Plan impact the course of Swedish domestic politics in the 1950s? And if so, how? Well, absolutely. I mean, we, we uh, had this interesting, uh, let's say, um, division between the uh, official rhetorical very neutralist stance and an economic development which uh, was very much into the western world or through towards the western world rather not least the united states but it had one very important impact as well and that went uh, that that was the case not only in sweden but also in most of europe namely that the loyalist soviet union loyalist communist parties were absolutely not allowed to join any government uh, in, in Western Europe at that time. Because that was one of the preconditions, implicit or explicit, uh, of the Marshall funds coming to a certain country, that you should not um, really take in people into your governments that were loyalists, like case more or less, to, to Moscow and, and the Soviet Union's communist dictatorships. And then what is the Marshall Plan's legacy today 70 some odd years later? Well, again, uh, for Sweden, the economic impact was not as huge as in many other countries, but the political impact of it and the political heritage 
uh, is still great because that made us a part of the West. The West itself became an entity, more or less, in this context. It, it had other reasons too, the Cold War, of course, and the division of Europe uh, across the, the lines of the Iron Curtain and so on. But the Marshall Plan was a positive, peaceful uh, venture that brought the Western world together to what it is today. Incredible, yeah. Well, Mike, thank you so much for providing me and all of us with a much better understanding of the Marshall Plan and Sweden's part in it. It really did play a foundational role in post-war transatlantic and U.S.-Swedish cooperation. We're very proud that the legacy of that cooperation more than 70 years ago is still very much with us today. Once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Glad to be here.